Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. With, you know, when you rap on, on wood, for example, like I've just done, it creates a very recognizable uh, audio yes. signal. Uh, and rappings that have been produced by uh, spirits and poltergeists, and, and in the Enfield case, uh, produce a different uh, acoustical signal. Yes, Barry Colvin did a very interesting study of uh, raps produced parano apparently paranormally mm -hmm. and found they do have a different acoustical uh, signature than uh, normally produced raps. So uh, we have some evidence that something um, different than normal human activity is going on. Um, Certainly different than normal human activity, yeah. but it may still be human activity. It, right. I, in, in other words, human psychic activity. Yes. I guess the point is that it wouldn't be fraudulent to, if if a normal rap uh, is produces a different kind no, of no, uh, not at all. acoustic signal. And it reinforces the point I made earlier that there are lots of borderline cases. So yeah. um, it's not just that there is there are sometimes fuzzy boundaries between poltergeist and haunting cases, mm -hmm. um, but the Enfield in some ways has uh, similarities with, with both. Mm -hmm. I know when I did uh, this study with Ted Owens, the PK man, who consciously produced a wide variety of uh, macro PK phenomenon, he also complained that uh, he was being uh, hounded by various forms of poltergeist activity. Um, I've heard that before in other cases as well. For mm -hmm. example, the uh, Gold Leaf Lady case, which I studied, that began as a poltergeist case. Mm -hmm. uh, before the woman, Katie, started to break out in this golden colored foil, she was experiencing uh, very classic poltergeist phenomena, objects appearing and disappearing, furniture rearranging itself. Mm -hmm. um, so, and in fact, a subject I've been studying in Argentina, who appears to be able to make tables rise by touching them very lightly, um, he's been a poltergeist agent for, for many, many years, and even today when he gets agitated, things fly off shelves. Mm -hmm. Well, it may well be far more common uh, than we appreciate uh, the occasional episode. Well, the reason it may be more common, we, we may not recognize it when it happens, because mm -hmm. what we're going to recognize are only the most histrionic or unusual events. And persistent. Persistent, yes. By so, the time uh, researchers get there, there's already quite a history, and then that needs to persist in order for researchers to have anything at all to describe. Right. And here I'm being only partially frivolous, but if, it, if these phenomena can happen in uh, more surreptitious ways, then we might wonder why our socks are disappearing. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in fact, uh, many people experience, you know, objects mysteriously disappearing yes. and, and reappearing, which yes. uh, is uh, characteristic of poltergeist cases. It is characteristic, and if people wonder whether they're dealing with paranormal apports or just human forgetfulness, check and see if the objects are too warm to touch, or at mm -hmm. least unusually warm.